What is going on, everybody? Welcome to this edition of the Warrior Soul Podcast. My name's Chris Albert, and this show is where we deliver tools, tactics, ideas, talk about issues, and introduce people to the veteran community to help them to live their best lives. And the reason why we do this is because over the past decade and a half, we've heard so many people talking about the veteran suicide rate, so many people talking about the rate of veteran homelessness, so many people talking about veterans suffering from depression and chronic disease, but we haven't heard a lot of people delivering real solutions. So the idea of this show is to introduce veterans to new ideas, new tactics, new practices that they can implement in their lives to make their lives better. And it's not just about preventing veteran suicide, it's about getting all veterans to truly live. And in today's episode, we have an absolutely amazing person. His name is Will Chum. Will is a trainer who's out of New Jersey right now, um, but he's somebody who you'll hear Ido Portal refer, refer to during his seminars, or somebody who you'll hear uh, 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 Pavel Totseling, you know, the creator of the Russian kettlebell movement here in the United States. Um, he'll refer to Will during his uh, during his seminars. And um, I got indirectly introduced to Will uh, through Chad Waterbury, who's another guest we've had on here on the Warrior Soul podcast. Chad's somebody I respect highly, um, and, it, and Chad's really at the top of this craft we call training. But, uh, but Will, within two minutes of meeting him, I knew two things. Number one, I knew that he was a good person who wanted to bring the highest value to every relationship that he has. And number two, I knew that he was extremely knowledgeable. This guy knows his stuff. He comes from a really long martial arts lineage. He's coached some really high level athletes, some really high level martial artists, and some really high level people. But the thing about Will is like, you don't see him on the internet much. He doesn't have a website. He's got a Facebook page, but he doesn't brag about his accolades and he's not constantly posting about himself on social media. Um, but through word of mouth, he's been able to develop this really awesome high-end clientele, and he's been able to have this amazing influence on the fitness industry by uh, you know, getting his ideas out there. And he dropped some real knowledge bombs on this episode, talking about things like posture, um, techniques with the, with the kettlebell, um, you know, a lot of really awesome tips and tricks to help to make yourself stronger and to prevent injuries. And um, had a lot of fun talking with him. And like I said, you're going to see how knowledgeable this guy is right off the bat. Uh, a couple of notes before we get into that conversation. We just opened up the Warrior Soul Fitness Academy. It's a private Facebook group on the uh, on, on, on Facebook, obviously. Um, but what we do in that group is it's a way of creating a community around what we do here on the Warrior Soul Podcast. And we're all about connecting veterans with other veterans and getting veterans to encourage other veterans. It's not just veterans on there. There's other people on there too, but everybody who's a member of the group to push each other forward, to get people to rise to a higher level. And you'll find constant tips, tricks, uh, techniques on there to help you to improve your nutrition, to improve your fitness. I'm doing Facebook Lives on there each week. And when you sign up for our newsletter, you get membership into that private Facebook group. You also get uh, access to our free testosterone optimization checklist. These are techniques um, and, and tools that you can use to increase your testosterone. Nothing on that checklist costs a lot of, costs a lot of money or anything like that. They're all practices that you can start implementing right away. And that's to, to preserve your life force. Testosterone is your life force as a male. Um, it's what's going to keep you happy. It's what's going to keep you productive. And it's what's going to keep you pushing to make your life better. So that's one of my goals here is to help the veteran community to uh, increase and optimize their testosterone levels and their overall health, their overall mental acuity, and their lives in general. Uh, in addition to that, you're going to get a free 21-day testosterone optimization workout. Uh, and again, all you need to do to get this stuff is to head over to www.warriorsoulagoji.com, uh, click on the link on the main page, 
and that will get you everything you need. Additionally, this podcast is brought to you by F-Bomb Nutrition. F-Bomb makes delicious portable packets of fat. Now, these things are absolutely awesome. I eat a couple of them every single day, and my favorite are their macadamia nut butters. These things taste like a crunched up macadamia nut cookie in a little pouch that you can carry anywhere with you you want, and they're loaded with really healthy fats and a lot of awesome nutrition. And our, our listeners here on the Warrior Soul Podcast, they get 20% off their first order when they go to www.dropandfbomb.com and they use the code WARRIORSOUL at checkout. Ross and Kara, the people who run that company, they're really awesome people. They're sending packets of this stuff overseas to the troops so that they can supplement their MREs with it. And uh, really, really great company. So go check them out. And with that, let's get into this episode with the Kaiser Sose of the fitness industry, Mr. Will Chung. What's going on, Will? How you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, man. Good. Uh, so we got to talk the other day and kind of a, a, an indirect intro- introduction through uh, Chad Waterbury. And, um, you know, I've been learning a little bit about you. I learned a lot about you during our conversation the other day. And um, here's the thing, man. I, I got to ask you this. You have been quoted by people like Ido Portal. You, you are associated with guys like Chad Waterbury and Pavel Totseline. And we're talking about some of the, the high experts of the fitness industry. And you yourself are known as one of the high experts of the fitness industry. But you keep a really low profile and you've managed to spread your name without a website. How is that done? <laughs> well, first of all, Chad is awesome. I highly respect him. I think we both discussed how big fanboys we were growing up reading his articles on T Nation and being very influenced by his science and evidence-based uh, material. So for me to even consider him a friend and a peer, let alone to have the honor of you know doing seminars with him, you know co-teaching seminars with him, has been a great honor for me. First off, uh, second off, uh, you know I don't know Ido per- personally, but again, a lot of he sent a lot of people my way via his camp I don't know what they're saying I know it's positive so it used to be like every like uh, year after his camp I would get like multiple friend requests on Facebook and I'll be like where did you hear about me they're like oh I just got back from Ito's camp and people were saying great things so I really appreciate whatever you know positive things people have been saying and 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 I have a tremendous amount of respect for him and and all these you know I was you know part of Pavel's second classing in this country to do kettlebells just out of curiosity before anyone even knew what it was so you know he's been a huge influence so I'm I feel very appreciative to even be mentioned in their names but I don't even feel worthy to be honest with you I just uh, do my little thing and that's all that's necessary. Well, and- it kind of makes you like the um, you know I know you you said you're, you're you're a little bit like the Forrest Gump but you're more like the Kaiser Sose of the. First- <laughs> Like, yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. And stuff, right. Trainers or, or Will Chung is going to come after you. <laughs> I've heard that quite a bit, especially with my fighters. Uh, but yes, you know, more, I would say more like uh, the Hitch, the Will Smith character, my best friend of 41 years. He goes, you're like Hitch from that movie. Will Smith, like, you know, you don't advertise. You're very selective of, of who you associate with. And the, the philosophy behind that is I'm 46. So I figure if the average mean life is somewhere in 83 or something, I'm already at the halfway mark. Like I've already passed the halfway mark. So, you know, like Sinatra said, I want to live it my way. And I, I don't mean selfishly, but I, I don't want to live with regret. So I really value the time that I spend with people. And it, it, you don't have to, you know, as we talked about stories behind the scenes, you don't have to be someone known in the industry. There's a kid at a supplement store that I spoke to because I know the owner. And the owner wasn't in. So I was talking to the kid and he was asking me about stuff and I could see that he had an issue with his shoulder. So I was like, oh, he goes, oh, my chiropractor said that. So, so he being a meathead, you know, physique competitor, I spoke his language. And I said, mm-hmm. do me a favor. Next time before you do your, your, your chest workout, I want you to do an incline dumbbell curl, but I want you to do it specifically like this. And again, it seems odd. Like, why would you 
do an incline dumbbell curl before you bench press. But what that did is realign him. And I could show you the screenshot of his DM to me. He goes, holy crap, everything you said it did, it did. Like, what the heck, bro? He goes, that is so awesome. And then we exchanged phone numbers. And he even messaged me yesterday. He's like, yo, in a couple weeks, I'll be back from Florida. Can we get together for a training session to grab some grub? I'm like, absolutely, at this young man. And who he's affiliated with and sponsored by is the CEO is a good friend of mine. So I messaged the CEO and he said, man, thanks for, you know, helping our people. And he, that guy's tried to send me some of his top sponsored athletes. But again, people at the top of their game tend to not be as open-minded mm -hmm. to new training and so forth. But my point is I am ingrained like the Kevin Bacon of six degrees. And all it is, is I tell people dominate your market. If you, train soccer moms if you train high school athletes if you train mma fighters excel and when you dominate they're so impressed that all of a sudden word of mouth their father their mother their brother their sisters their cousins their teammates and that's what happens you know i i start out with one high school kid who's the slowest kid on the soccer team get him to be the second fastest kid the first fastest is also one of my guys i end up training the whole team because oh. they see they see the kid, they see the results, you know, same thing with all my UFC guys, even Frankie Edgar was really uh, very, he met with me once. I, I forgot how he first heard about me. He met with me once, really enjoyed it, wanted to me to join his team, but I had some ethical issues with some of the stuff he was doing that I thought was contributing to his issue. So, you know, you being Italian, Italian American, understand the way I worded it was, I don't want to be your guma, you know, like <laughs> yeah, that's basically how I said it to him, you know, <laughs> and you know, he was like, kind of like, ah, oh, you know, so we didn't hook up that, but then, you know, because his wife is, uh, a, was a pharmaceutical rep. So she's going to all these doctors, the orthopedics, you know, and, you know, basically they would ask like, Hey, how's Frankie doing? Blah, blah, blah. And she's like, yeah, you know, he's got whatever. And so she, my name kept popping up with all these doctors. And that's like frustrating. Cause it's like, we already talked to this guy. They kind of, we didn't butt heads. It's just, we didn't see eye to eye. And mm -hmm. so, so, and nice kid, no, nothing personal gets him. We really, I have nothing but great things to say about him. Hard worker. And then, so his father being the amazing father that he is hired me to, to, pre, to prehab him for his knee surgery and then rehab. Him. So he ended up dropping like 20 pounds with me. And I remember like Santino, like, you know, Frankie's son got injured and, his father just kind of like pop, jumped up and popped up and Frankie's like, damn old man, you're, you're moving pretty fast. I see you getting lean. And he goes, I'm telling you it's this kid. You got to go see this kid. He goes, I'll pay for it. You know, like that shows you what type of father he is, that he loves his son so yeah. much that he's willing to exemplify it first and say, I'm telling you, this kid's good for you. You know, and that's how I got him and all these other people because of the example that I provide for people. Well, that's pretty awesome because, you know, we're kind of in an age with the internet where a lot of trainers, they go online and it's kind of like you're trolling. You're tr not trolling in like the, the, the ogre, but people go fish and they troll for fish or they, they try to troll nets and things like that. And you're trying to drag up whatever kind of clientele you can get, but you're in a position because of the way you conducted your business, you can really work with the people that you want to work with and you can pick and choose based off of your own ethical considerations and, uh, and based off of your own beliefs and, and your own code. And I think that's awesome. And I feel very fortunate because I could name drop a lot of people like the U S team doctor for U S track and field and all these people who literally know all the top guys, all the top, you know, corrective exercise guys, strength and conditioning, powerlifting, whatever. But what I can say that's provable in a court of law is that as many people as these, know, these people know, a lot of these people are actually paying me for my services. So it's one thing to say, hey, I know, you, and you know, he can give me a program or he can, because we're all buddies. Mm -hmm. But to actually put your money where your mouth is and actually hire someone to train you for two and a half years, for three months, for six months or whatever, I think that speaks volumes. And that's really where my proof resides. And it, it turned out really being just a lot of people in the industry have such fragile egos that they never credit you or do. This. So I kind of, I kind of thought it was kind of funny. I'm a bit of a Marvel nerd. I, I, I like superhero movies. So 
you know, the whole Hail Hydra thing kind of became a moniker for me that I'm kind of everywhere but nowhere, that people don't, they know me, but they don't know me, but they don't acknowledge me, but I, I am kind of connected. So I, I kind of ran with that as a joke, and, I, and I'm really pleased with it because now people are scared because they don't know who my clients are, who aren't. So someone will say, hey, I was just at this place, and that guy just spoke nothing good things about you. I go, of course. I mean, because he doesn't, you know, like he doesn't know if we're buddies or not buddies. Like when you clearly, what I call circle jerk people on social media, you know who they're affiliated with. But with me, I've influenced so many people and, you know, I've had to sign non-disclosure agreements and keep my mouth shut and been privately tagged and things just because it's an inside thing that you can't reveal that this person is playing this role or this person is injured or this person is this. So I've had to keep my mouth shut about a lot of things. And, you know, I feel the good fortune to work with people and to follow people throughout their careers from working as a Shelby Sheriff's Department to Biden Secret Service agent to Homeland Security to counterterrorism to like to being one of the five men tasked with teaching defensive tactics and firearms for, you know, our agents. Like to follow that career path. And mm -hmm. then I remember after visiting him one time and I sent him a picture, he goes, Oh, that's our house from San Diego. Oh, that's he and his wife had noted that I'm the only person who has been to every single one of their locations, wherever they were stationed, that I was the only, not even her family has visited their, every single one of their homes. And that's what I believe in is supporting my guys from boot camp to, you know, civil affairs, you know, over at uh, Quantico teaching, like literally following their careers from, from a private all the way up to a staff sergeant, from, from boot camp to, to Fallujah, you know, and, and post, you know, having mm -hmm. kids, having a business. I'm a huge believer in uh, resiliency, longevity, loyalty, you know, you know, I'm your Huckleberry. You know, that, that what I, I believe is a true coach, not someone who just takes credit for, hey, I, you know, I did this or did that. That's, that's a circle jerk party. I'm not interested in that. We're starting to, starting to get into some of the big reasons why I wanted you to come on to this, to talk to our audience of veterans and, and, and things like that. And I kind of want to start this out by asking you, what are some of the biggest mistakes that people are making that are hurting their long-term resiliency? Uh, first of all, jumping around too much without having an overarching theme. And what I mean by that is, and I kind of blame – I think Alan Cosgrove was really big on promoting the Bruce Lee quote about, you know, uh, taking what is useful, discarding what is useless. And Bruce Lee started that even because, again, me being a, a third generation traditional martial artist, you know, my grandfather influenced Chuck Norris, a lot of people, Shaquille O'Neal, uh, a lot of people in the, those are the celebrities. But in, in the real world, he, he was one, the first guy to ever put physics in a martial arts book. He, you know, most of the, you know, the father of Taekwondo, Jun Rhee recently passed away and Black Belt did an article on him. There's a whole group picture of my grandfather and Junri as a kid sitting right by my grandfather. So he's been very influence, influential in many people's lives without people realizing it. And post-Korean War, so the, a lot of the orphan kids needed to defend themselves against people robbing, you know, these kids with no family, you know, fathers to protect them because they died during the war. So my father, my grandfather taught them ethics how to defend themselves and how to protect one another. Mm -hmm. And one of the great stories that was originally published in Chuck Norris's original book, uh, autobiography was, we have a, a pin. My, my family crest is a fist with a wreath and a scroll underneath. That's, that's a family trademark uh, crest. So that's a Moodle Kwan crest, the school of martial virtue or brotherhood. So Chuck Norris talked about how he used to walk around in the rough neighborhoods with this pin so people would surround him, see the pin and back off because it, they weren't so much afraid of one person. They were afraid of the repercussions of the other guys coming back. Gotcha. To find him because we were such a strong, we took care of our own, you know, that kind of, not mafia, but you know how it's like, oh, don't mess with the Corleone family. It's a very similar concept. You don't mess with, with, with that family. I, even when I moved to Korea to go to uh, high school, you know, this guy was like, oh, what do you do? He did Taekwondo, you know, and he's actually, uh, I'm still friends with him to this day. And, and then he, he said, what do you do? So I told him, you know, my grandfather's art. And he was like, okay. And he went and asked his instructor. So every time I was around him, he would flinch. And I said, what's the matter? He goes, 
my teacher said your art's for killing and ours is for sport. I was like, no, it's a, it's a self-defense. Like he got real flinchy, but there was no need for that. But my point being is that they don't realize that Bruce Lee had years of, you know, boxing, you know, Tai Chi, Wing Chun. He had foundation so he could pick up wrestling, box, and different things. When you have no foundation and you jump around, it's like not being able to just even, you know, play tag and, and you think you could learn a little hockey and a little little MMA and a little this. It, that's what's wrong. Everyone thinks a weekend course makes you a specialist or a certified, uh, you know, douchebag, you know, with the abbreviations after your names, you know. Because I've, I was, I've been mentored by some of the great people and lived with them and, you know, literally been trained like the old movie stuff. So I laugh at people who think they really have an education or, or call people mentors. I just today, I found someone on Facebook said student of Will Chung. I asked the the gentleman to re remove that for me, please, because I don't, I don't associate with him. I don't like to please not use my name. Yeah, that's uh, that's something we're seeing more and more of out there. And and you know, I think this notion of foundation, I think what's happened over the years is is a lot of people are really uncomfortable with the notion of being a white belt, right? Of, of being a beginner, of, of having a lot of things in front of you that you have to learn. And everybody kind of just wants to jump to the, the blue belt, the, the purple belt level, and, and, and then and move forward from there. But it does, it takes years of building a foundation, years of, of, of you know, getting yourself straight enough so you can move on to, you know, just the intermediate stuff before you get to the advanced stuff. And I think, you know, we saw that a lot in powerlifting a few years ago when the West side method became really popular. We saw a lot of guys just jumping on the, putting on chains and bands onto their, their, their barbells while they were squatting and, and let alone their, their, their form and their, 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 their technique was awful. Um, and they needed to be working on that rather than worrying about adding, you know, uh, accommodating resistance. Like that. Correct. So that's, that's the biggest thing is, is really lack of work ethic. You know, people aren't willing to, they think they can hack everything. You know, Chad and I have had this conversation about not being big fans of hacks. You know, we're all for shortcuts when you could take it. But again, that's based off of a foundation of learning, of education, of strength training, of structure. And to me, that's, that's the most important thing is, is, is because we are pouring ourselves for hashtags and likes, there's no true self-worth, which is why we see these suicides, which is why we see this, this is why we see people who are so, what I call Christmas story Italians, they're fragile, you know, like, you know. So that being said, you know, and we've talked about this too, you know, you talk about the reverb from a 50 cal or the trauma in terms of the inflammation of the mm -hmm. brain. Well, that's reinforced because most of us are sitting here texting like this in a poor posture. So the habit of unloaded poor posture and then all of a sudden take in, you know, I take in a bunch of coffee in the morning to get and pre-workout to get amped. And then I, I take all this sugar, alcohol and stuff to bring me down is exactly what Every Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, Heath Ledger, all these people tried to self-medicate up and down that they're so like, I call death by a thousand paper cuts, that when there's a real pressure, a real wolf, they, they can't handle it because to them, just running around doing errands is, is, is an inconvenience or cons they deserve ice cream or to, to shop because they've just done what is their duty. And, and as you know, as any Marine, it's like, you don't go into boot camp thinking you could reinvent the way they process boot camp and, and train and educate people on firearms. It's like, well, I think we should do this. It's like, really, son? Like, like who are you to think to say that this has lasted and worked and stand, stood up against the pressure of time? And it's the same thing with this, that we need to – and we our goal is because we want for the next generation to be better than us. We want our children. We want our students – we want our clients to benefit from our mistakes, from our, the, the failures that we've done. So that that's where we want them to shortcut. But the one thing we can't shortcut them is the hard work. And I tell people, that's why the most important thing is shared experience. People always want to watch 
my training session because they look on my you know social media and all they see is food and that's going out like i know nothing about your training because i don't really put out any information on training because i'm not looking to solicit anyone for a new client however mm -hmm. i do get together with people and love food and eating and even chad put up a post recently about how powerful it is to get together with people and just eat and and bond with them and i i i I concur with that and that's one of my big things is 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 I think chow time is a really important time to bond to create nicknames to to understand each other's verbiage and language so I can relate to you and you could relate to me so that when the shit hits the fan we're we're doing hand signals and you're not you're you're going to me what 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 does this mean are we going are we on three like yeah what the fuck are what? we doing that's yeah, I, I definitely hear you on that. I think um, that kind of human bonding has to occur in, 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 in any kind of team situation. Um, on, the, on the aspect of resilience, I think that, um, you know, uh, like you said, a lot of the stuff we're seeing related to traumatic brain injury, that, that could be induced by poor posture and things like that. What, what types of daily, like, any kind of daily activity you, you, you would – talk to people about you know because we do live in a world where, where this thing kind of dominates and i i'd love to throw the thing out into the ocean and get rid of it forever but we're, we're kind of getting into this world where you're expected to answer an email in a certain amount of time you're expected to uh you know respond to to a message or something like that respond to a text to communicate with your family members and your loved ones um how do we instill that kind of balance where we can you know, keep ourselves from falling into that kind of hunched over turtle position uh, that people are falling more and more into these days? I think you and Chad hit it best in, in, in your last podcast, meditation. But let me give you an actionable step because meditation is such a broad term like prayer. Mm -hmm. It's a very generic term, right? So you're talking to someone who's been raised in that culture and literally at one point for several years was meditating four times a day. I mean, so that being said, it means nothing if it doesn't apply. What, what does all the years boxing or if I can't handle myself against a haymaker in a bar, like mm -hmm. it means nothing if I know all these 50 different crane techniques, but you know, I can't handle a simple haymaker, you know, that like that's ludicrous. It feels like I wasted my time. So something simple and I'll, t and I'll explain why this is so important is you breathe, you stand, I call it stacking and tracking, you know, and a lot of people, I have people stand in a V, right? Cause that V position is a very, you know, even in the military, right? This kind of like mm -hmm. military stance, which is what the term military press came from, right? Until they started really bending their back so they couldn't really judge an overhead press, you know? But just like people naturally go to the same spot for their bench press or deadlift. we see it for the bar right for upper body stuff right people go to the same notch to do their particular bench press well for a learning technique you know for body comp change you want variability mm -hmm. but for strength and optimization your feet should also have equidistant for your stance for your deadlift for different things so that being said v to i is what i could consider a stacking tracking position and what you do is, for example, you could just look out to the beach. I happen to live at the Jersey Shore, so I can look out on the coast. But you want to look, you want to look at somewhere close and inhale, and then exhale and look very far, and look close as you inhale, and exhale and look very far. First of all, you if you do that for a little bit, you'll be amazed if you're not accustomed to it how sore your eye muscles are the next day. Mm. And then the other thing that it teaches you, the main thing it teaches you is it teaches you to go from microscope to telescope. Because what happens is a survival instinct is being able to adapt. Fixating on one thing is what's going to get you killed. It's like the, the woman in the red dress in the matrix. If you fixate on one thing, you know, it's like you see a beautiful woman walk by, you rear on someone because your your lack of, you know, spatial awareness. That depth of perception is so key because one of the reasons why Mike Tyson was so successful in his era, he was very short for a heavyweight. Most of the heavyweights were taller, leaner, longer. What, he was able to negate it, that whole custom model style, because I knew Teddy Atlas when he was working with Shannon Briggs. So, and when Shannon Briggs was up and coming. And one of the key tenets is you can, even just from a firearm perspective, you could relate. You could pick up a target doing this. 
you could pick a target moving laterally. You could time it. Mm -hmm. What's hard is something going forward and backward while going lat. In other words, oscillating and changing depth. That's hard to perceive. Mm -hmm. How many people who don't need contacts or glasses as they age need reading glasses? Because right. they can't, right? Because they've lost the ability to look far, look close, look middle. They've, they no longer train those muscles. So it atrophies. You know, some of it's also due to other stuff like glaucoma and diabetes and all this other stuff. But I'm talking about in terms of healthy individuals who just atrophy the muscles, just like someone who, you know, I, I'll do a seminar and I'll have people take a dry erase board and unscrew these imaginary light bulbs. And most people can't get past like nine or 10 before their shoulders burn, but yet they can bench press, you know, 400 pounds because they've, you know, they don't do this often. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah, I really do think it's about moving your body in different ways and finding that out more and more as I get older um, and, and really finding those things that you haven't used in a while. Like, I just got a set of, of gymnastics rings and uh, right just before I come on this conversation, I hooked them up to the tree outside and, you know, I was out there playing around with them, doing some pull-ups on the gymnastics rings. And one of the things I noticed about pull-ups, I mean, I can do, do over 20 pull-ups on a bar, but on gymnastics rings, I'm really feeling it because I'm getting that twisting action with my wrist and I have more wrist mobility and, and uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not, able to kind of like lock it in or anything like that. And I'm, I'm feeling like I'm getting a much better workout out of it. And, and, uh, you know, I'm, I actually feel like I'm getting more mobility out of it. Like my shoulders can go, I can raise my arms higher after the workout than I before, which isn't necessarily true when I'm doing any other kind of workout. Excellent. I, and I'll give you another suggestion just to think outside the box of how I think most people don't do it. And I could, show you it on many different implements including kettlebells and so forth but you know how most of us grab the inside part of the ring right this mm -hmm. u part right try gripping it on the top part of the ring where it's attached and pull because what you'll notice is you're strong with your grip do re mi the middle finger being the conduit and mi fa so so you're either pulling stronger here or here mm. and that's what i do with my jujitsu guys and my judo guys for their gi grappling i never have them, as my teacher used to say, do, re, mi, or mi, fa, so, never do, re, mi, fa, so. Because your death gripping will pre-fatigue you. Gotcha. But having this in, intelligent grip that oscillates, so you're practicing more of this, because anytime we lose our grip, it's always at the pinky first. Can you describe that for the guys who are, who are not watching this on YouTube, but maybe what Absolutely. Uh, on, on iTunes? Absolutely. So grabbing the top of the, the ring, causes a round shape right of the hand correct gotcha instead of a u it's more like a like a like a concave versus convex right so mm -hmm. the aperture because the reason why it's important for the hand to make a round shape right is because the shoulder is a rotational joint and the hand is the circumference to this rotational joint so when you grip things like a sledgehammer you'll notice when you lever it up you're going to be heavier with the okay, like you're making an okay sign. Yeah, with your index finger and your thumb, right? Correct, to like you're holding an ice cream cone. Gotcha, gotcha. Or you're using a knife to st thrust forward, mm -hmm. like a saber grip. Well, they would consider a saber grip. Mm -hmm. So articulating between those two, you'd be surprised. Like, I work with all these boxers and so forth. I'll do articulation drills right with them and they're like oh we already know how to warm up we don't need to know how to warm up all of a sudden they're doing this and they're like oh why do i feel this in the arches of my feet why is why are my hips loosening up i go because your fascia is all connected and if one joint rolls the other start to roll like ball bearing joints gotcha gotcha now you know as you mentioned fascia is all connected so um you know, anytime you get a, a knot anywhere in your body, it could potentially affect the rest of your body. Um, so if we're talking about guys who are going out there into the field who, who are dealing with, you know, walking with 80 pound packs for, for 20 miles on end or even 10 miles, 
depending on how crazy their uh, their platoon leader got that day. Um, you know, what should guys be doing in order to recover from that and to prevent these kinds of knots from building up? Two simple things. Number one, again, once you're stacked and tracked, basically just shaking. Mm -hmm. to, to basically shake because the body naturally shakes just like a dog, right? You know, it, like when it, when it wants to get up, it stretches, it shakes. When an animal is scared, it, it's, it gets very perceptive. It smells something. It thinks it hears something. And then it develops this anxiety because it's ready to fight or flight, right? But animals naturally handle it by going, they, they tremor, they, sh they shimmy, they shiver. We can shake and then sway. The lymph nodes are here and in your groin area. Because I know a lot of guys, when they were stationed, they couldn't go running because it's, there's no distance in the camp to run because they could be sniped, so forth and so on. So I gave them stationary drills to pump their lymphatic system, what I call walking without walking, which work your stabilizers and builds the endurance of your ability to be able to stand all day with all this multiple gear over because the one thing is as we age our one rep max our reflexes it declines that's everybody mm -hmm. but the one thing that improves and is proven to improve is as you age is your your slow twitch your stabilizing muscles can improve which is why tai chi yoga can help an 80 year old with poor balance gotcha that can improve so if we're talking about a 40 or 50 year old healthy guy, they could build the endurance of their grip of their dorsi flexion. You know, just something as simple as pulling your toe. Again, I, I told you, you know, and this was publicly shared on social media. So I don't think I'm betraying anyone's trust. You know, Joe DeFranco, who's a well-known trainer said, you know, I asked him to do like a hundred, let's say. And he was like, I only got the 30, but boy, my hips feel amazing. I'm going to show, you know, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon because they're also have some joint issues too. So, I'm glad he got something out of that. You know, the, the, that's fantastic. And I appreciate the, you know, it shows you what type of person Joe DeFranco is. And he's an accomplished guy. So he doesn't mind acknowledging and crediting somebody that he learned something from. It's mm -hmm. that simple, con conceptually speaking. But that ankle flexion, the reason why most people have hip and knee, because and, we have artificially flat surfaces. And that allows us to drag our feet like zombies and the walking dead. And to wobble and hobble like Frankenstein who is in theory a piece of a bunch of different body parts assembled. The more you can articulate your ankles because they're meant to do this plantar and dorsi flex and also evert and invert, like trying to ride an airplane to be level. Mm -hmm. And the reason why this joint does this is because the earth is round. There's nowhere in nature that is a completely flat or level surface. You're Even in a get, place that looks... You're going to get the flat earthers mad at you, man. You're about to... <laughs> You're about to get well, them hunting you down on social media. <laughs> I, it, this is so bad that we get to the point that I only have true, three universal truths, you know. The, <laughs> you know, the gravity, Earth is rather now, – now they're trying to take that away from, from us as well. But <laughs> that being said, let's, okay, let's say the Earth is flat. I don't even want to argue with people. Let's say the Earth is flat. Walk in an open field barefoot. There's nothing that's actually flat, meaning there's anthills, there's divots. There's rocks, which means you have to articulate. And even Joe DeFranco's partner, Smitty, said to me, so what am I supposed to do, walk around with a bunch of, like, rocks and dirts in my house? I said, no, Legos are sufficient. He's like, oh, you're such a smart ass, you know? But it's like, but Legos are. Like, anyone who stepped on a Lego, like, that, that's stalker mode. That's, I don't want to piss off my wife because, I, I, you know, I had one too many beers and I came in late tonight. Like, everyone knows how to walk with their whole body when it comes to that type of survival mode. Yeah, the Lego is probably the most painful thing if you if you step on it. But uh, no, man, I, I've definitely noticed that. I've gone out barefoot. I walk around my my complex out here barefoot every single day, and um, you know you really notice it, especially if you're going over over rocks, over over pebbles. Um, you, you you begin to develop like new sensory with your feet. I haven't graduated to the point where I'm comfortable running barefoot or anything like that though, because, um, uh, I, anytime I ever stump my toe, I'm like, Oh my God, it's, it's like pain for, for, uh, 15 minutes and then, and then I get pissed off. But, uh, but I definitely take those walks every single day. But that's meditation. Think, mm -hmm. Even if you, if you trot or jog or march for 10 feet, that's meditation. 
because mm -hmm. you're mindful. Whereas the other one, it's like, I'm already in a pattern. I have shoes that are forgiving. I have, I have and that's why we have, we rely on gear so much. And I'm not against gear. I'm saying, look, utilize, it. but something as simple as swaying and shaking will help resonate. Even, you know, just something as simple as I had a guy who's uh, New Jersey state troopers. They have a tactical team. They call it teams. It's an acronym for something, tactical entry, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. So whenever there's anything big, like a mall shooting, they, they, they all have the, the, the alerts so they all they're they're always carrying their gear with them in their trunk so they have to get all their bike in. you know it sounds cool he's like yeah a lot a lot of it's just sitting around waiting waiting in the van you know with all the tactical gear but that aside he had attempted to be on that team for many years crossfit instructor crossfit certified super fit like, like abs muscular very well conditioned awesome guy sean's his name and so he started training with me, and I also ended up training his wife as well, which goes to show you that, that pattern, right? But um, something as simple as when he was trotting, on his non-dominant leg, I would always have him exhale and sink more. Because your dominant leg, you could, you're, you're more coordinated, you're better balanced. Like your non-dominant, you tend to lock and pop your hip out, which is why it doesn't absorb force. So I would have him trot with the – So it always hit that non-dominant foot. Mm. His recovery went through the roof and he was like, why don't they teach us at the academy? Why don't more people know? Like, I, that's the common thing I get. And one of the things he, he asked me a question about was he had to, one of the obstacle courses besides swimming and climbing and all this gear was taking like a mini bulldog and ramming down, a, knocking down a door, but being buttressed up against the wall. So it's not like you had a lot of room to swing this, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, Sean, let's look at this from a biomechanical point. Of view. You have lateral motion. You mm -hmm. have this horizontal motion. And you have this vertical axis, right? He goes, yeah. So what I want you to do is I want you to roll and spinal wave. And I said, I want you to pivot your foot. So I want you to, like you're throwing up. So we, we have an arc again. So it's up, round, down. And he spinal waves, boom, he said, like a bunch of matchsticks it just it kindled it was so easy he couldn't believe it. because what do you do when you have a paper towel to this big and a string this long you coil it you create more space dimensionally because you don't have that much space lateral to create force yeah spinal waves are something that uh you know my friend brian rose from london real he, he started doing those every morning he heard that from from ito portal and uh, I started doing them up against the door and, and, and really just kind of uh, uh, starting with my chin, trying to get my chin there, bringing my chest there, bringing my pelvis slowly, and then coming back. And I'll do, do you know, a few dozen of those every morning just to get my body warmed up a little bit. That, that's a huge thing. A lot of people don't have that kind of spinal mobility anymore because they don't use it. Yeah, but all that comes from martial arts. The Chinese call it chang su jin, which is silk rhythm. So chang su jin, like... They have a hand drill that basically equates with the uh, yin yang symbol. So all it looks like is it's just this. It's this, and basically all that is is every single shape your hand could make, potentially. Mm. So you know, and then they do it with two hands, you know, and it's like this. And all that is is you know that's articulation. So that's that's what it's just teaching you this kind of like thoracic heaving and the heaving is what you do when you're under like you know like when you're fighting when the adre you have an adrenaline dump it's like it's this kind of primal kind of hulkish kind of thing and we need to get in touch with that i mean that's why we are trying to procreate we are, we are trying to survive i tell people if you have a four-wheel drive vehicle and the all-wheel drive doesn't work you'd complain about it, even though you rarely use it. Even if you rarely use it, you still want the option. I tell people from a movement perspective, you may never have to, you know, heaven forbid, ever defend yourself or do this, but you want to retain the ability to. And I think that's key. And you talk about spinal waves. I, we talked about it privately. You know, when I work with guys with PTSD, one of the first things I teach them is how to shock absorb, how to take force kinetically through their body. So it, releases a ton of trauma you'd be surprised and i'm not a big hokey pokey you know hippie earthy kind of guy you know, i'm more a pragmatic guy but 
I've, I've nailed people who were sexually abused, who had trauma, who lost, who were in crashes. And they're like, how do you know? It's like, cause you start to see the signs because there's trapped trauma in certain areas. Like women purposely numb that area because they were abused there. So they purposely try not to get sensation. So when you activate that area and start to flood blood in there, they get an emotional response. You know, and I was just like, well, you know, when I was a young kid, I was like, what the heck is this? And then I started talking to all these therapists and realizing that this is, and then it's like commonplace for me now to identify it and see it even in a seminar. Mm. That's yeah. That's uh, I hear that's a real common, common issue with women as far as tr keeping trauma in their pelvis, keeping trauma in their genitals and things like that. Um, you know, uh, you've been really, really big with the Russian kettlebell training as, as we, uh, talked about at the beginning. Um, and, uh, you know, kettlebells become more and more popular these days. And, you know, I keep a kettlebell in my house. I think it's one of those pieces of equipment that people could keep anywhere and, and potentially get a workout in whenever, but what kinds of things are you seeing people doing with kettlebells that maybe they shouldn't be doing or that they could be doing better? Well, I don't care what particular certification you come from. I know people in all of the different branches who actually certify people and have worked with them privately. Um, I have nothing against anybody's techniques. My basic thing is whenever there's any type of unnecessary jar, in other words, when you hit the brakes, Everything should deaccelerate. You shouldn't still have tissue boxes and dumbbells still flying. Gotcha. So you shouldn't have things still moving and jarring because you do enough of that in, in, in your combat or, you know, sparring and all that kind of stuff, 50 cal machinery. You do that in your, enough in that. And you, that's why you only get so many of them. That's why in your training, you shouldn't reinforce that. One of the things, and this will be exclusive to your podcast. You know, I don't do a lot of podcasts per se, but one thing I can tell you that's exclusive that I have yet to see anywhere else from a learning material perspective or anything is what I call a thumb under. You've seen people grab the kettlebell incorrectly by mistake, meaning what do I do with this kettlebell and do I curl it? But I specifically have a whole sequence of drills and series where I don't feel we're utilizing the actual design of the kettlebell as well as we could right mm -hmm. so when you hold the kettlebell like this it causes this position so your forearm has to marry and coil and support and kiss that kettlebell like this which strengthens your rotator cuff muscles so i have people do various thumb under snatches press i build them up obviously but i have them go through progressions and i'm kind of known for this gooseneck you know some guy was doing something and he, a lot of people have wrist pain because they're doing like explosive push-ups and dynamic frog hops and plyos. And it's because their, their shoulders are internally rotated and they're jammed like this. You never saw a 1950 secretary who never looked at their typewriter complain about carpal tunnel syndrome because their posture was. Mm. So that being said, I did a video once on social media and went a little viral in the sense that, you know, I was doing push-ups on my wrist and doing clapping push-ups and people were like, Oh, I was like, well, the tendon and ligament strength should be just as equally strong here as it is here. And the reason why most people don't have this strength is because this fascia is so tight, which is why this whole chain of their, their anterior delt and their pec, that's why people pop their biceps all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so just to describe that again, it, it kind of looks like the way people do the false grip on the gymnastics rings, which correct it's almost like a like a looks like a gooseneck i think you mentioned gooseneck correct this is bent forward and then you're grabbing the kettlebell like this and then you're doing like external rotations with it bringing things up and you're married to it try pressing a kettlebell with the kettlebell in front wow that's pretty awesome yeah it's, think, it's phenomenal yeah i'll i'll try and um i'll I'll try and find that video of you doing the push-ups. If you can send that to me so, so people can see it. And then, uh, yeah, well, that, that's pretty awesome. I never thought about that before. That's really awesome. But I do it with dumbbells. I have version. I, again, I've had Smitty in my house and he's like, what do you call this? I'm like, I don't know, because I don't really care about what it's referred to. But he's like, Oh, I'm going to call it the trunk press. I'm like, okay, you can call it the trunk press. I don't really care. You know, I just care that you use it to be honest with you, you know, yeah. but this is, 
because think about it. Think of how strong this grip is. You know, like extension is a lot. We like we know we can all curl more this way, right? Mm -hmm. So holding it this way, you know, Larry Scott, for example, one of the reasons for his big biceps, some may argue genetics, some may argue steroids, whatever. I'm not here to debate that. One thing that I can say that he was known for is risk. Even at his seminars, he go, I, I bet you I, I can out risk curl, you know, like 225 pounds, anybody else. And uh, do it like this. So I actually have his form bench that was his because he, he had a company that sold like custom equipment that he believed in, you know, because he was from the Gironda uh, uh, philosophy of training. And so I asked because they usually custom build it. They're like, we may actually have one around here like because they usually uh, build it to order. So I thought that was kind of odd. But later what came out was, again, uh, Larry was suffering from Alzheimer's, so he wasn't working out. So I actually have his actual form pad that he barely used. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. So that being said, you know, that's the Forrest Gump of my life. You know, I, I just happen to be that stupid lucky. I'm, I'm not that bright. So I just happen to be at the right place at the right time. So his thing is this, was anchoring me so low that you could roll and lever by rolling the shoulder down. And that's why his, the Scott bench is super padded. On the, it's not a conventional preacher. It's, it's, it's densely foamed. So you can drive your elbows. So you have to initiate with the wrist curl. Mm -hmm. And then that wrist curl then levers and forces the elbow to tactically drive into the pad, which then allows an exorbitant amount of weight to be utilized, which hence will add more bicep growth than a bunch of various things together. Just lots and lots of muscle fiber recruitment going on there. That's pretty awesome. And proper sequencing. But think yeah. about it. Like, you know, are, are you stronger lifting someone this way or pushing a car this way or like this way? Right, right. Are you stronger benching this way? Or, you know, like the bend the bar, you know, you dr you're coiling your elbows down, basically. You're... You don't, you don't want to do this. This is the, a Garanda neck press, which I also teach to some people because it does really hit the upper fibers because of the alignment of where the pec inserts. Because mm -hmm. the pec inserts, it's all these fibers here, and then it ties right into here. But again, yeah. with people with injuries, I don't recommend that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a neck press, I mean, like as far as everything goes, that's, uh, that's something Vince was definitely known for. He didn't like bench press at all because he said it didn't work the pecs at all. It worked, just worked the arms. Um, but yeah, if your shoulder's out, I mean, just getting back there could be a problem. Right. But a lot of good people who are very mindful are teaching people just to do it with dumbbells in the sequence. There are a lot of good people out there now. I think, think there are people really out there doing good work, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and, and you're definitely one of them, man. I, I Some of this stuff is like blowing my mind right now, and I hope the uh, the audience is getting this too. Um, well, we're coming toward the, uh, the end of our time here, and I wanted to ask you a couple more things. Um, sure. Number one, um, you know, when you were, you said at the beginning of the conversation, you're, you're kind of at – past the middle point. Not, I don't think you're too far past the middle point. We're kind of close in age, so I don't, I don't think I'm too far past the middle point. No, but, but you know yeah. what I mean? Just yeah. looking from a sheer numbers point of view, we're, we're past the midway point, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, um, you know, what do you foresee for yourself in the remainder of your career and what you're going to do? What, are there any hills you have left to climb here? And, and uh, um, if so, what do you think they are? A ton, actually, because... I feel I'm on the point five where I know a lot of the old school guys, whether it be martial artists or whatever, and I know a lot of the next gen guys. And I want to be the bridge between that, whether it's generations or even East versus West, right? Uh, Paul Check, Charles Polican, they're all talking about five elements. They're all talking about, you know, different things that are, you know, based off of traditional Chinese medicine. That, that whole Taoist Chinese medicine theory, that's something I was raised in as a philosopher. I didn't even think of it as something separate. It's just what, how they lived, right? How my teachers lived, how my, you know, they could also be very eccentric. But my whole point is to infuse the traditional values of martial arts that, you know, because they've done it before. It's, we're not reinventing the wheel here, right? Mm -hmm. And I purposely get all my material that I use to disintegrate a joint and I reverse engineered it to integrate it. 
So I'm looking to keep peace and neutralize force. I mean, the Chinese character move for Marshall is really sword and prevent. I actually got so that tattooed really, on my stomach. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back when I was a, a dumbass Marine. But um, yeah, I got the, I have the character from Marshall on my stomach. But you're a peacekeeper then. You're, you know, you're, you know, when I worked with the tactical training unit at the NYPD, they had a really nice, I don't know, I want to call it a cartoon, but like a, a poster or a sign. Mm -hmm. And it basically said, it's, it's what you fight for and why you fight. So basically they had a police officer in front of a baby carriage. And then they had a terrorist hiding behind a baby carriage. And that really stuck in my head. You know, I made a lot of, you know, like your Simon Sinek, start with your why. So to me, the future is I want to share as much of what knowledge I have. And I bust my guys balls all the time saying, you guys are barely on the appetizers with me. You better get your asses going because I got a lot to share and I do, but I only work with the willing. So my big thing is to always work with, people i and and i love working with people I, you know for me just buy me a meal it's it's not about the money for me it's it's just it's just bonding it's it's you know having the good fortune of knowing some of the greatest people in what they do and learning from them and i'm a great student i love learning i'm like i have no problem being like how do i do this what do i like you know and they teach i so many theories on weapons and aiming i've heard so many wonderful people tell me stuff and i'm like wow that's pretty awesome you know i I never even knew that. And, and so my big thing is to really help the next gen before I move on. And I'll end up, you know, becoming that old crusty guy like all my old teachers who are, you know, kind of hard to get to these days. But uh, like my uncle's 71, you know, but he's still getting his legs straight up over his head. I mean, God bless the guy, you know, like that's just, yeah. Okay. So I give, I give him a lot of credit. And to me, that's what I want to do is I just want to keep exemplifying and helping people. And I, I always put out a bat light, like whatever social media stuff I do, it's just, if it resonates with someone, I'd love to interact and I'd love to build rapport. I'm not looking for a quick bang. And, and I keep getting invited to places for months because not only do I do a weekend seminar, but I work with their athletes, their staff, their clients, their, you know, so I end up, you know, I'm booked because I'm, I got all this stuff going on, you know, and every time I go back, I have more requests. So yeah. then I have to see this person and that person. and that. That's know? a great, that, I mean, that's the best advertisement you can get. And, and I'm sorry to see, you know, I think uh, that's how, you, you know, that's a great way of getting yourself everywhere. And that's a great way of, of running your business just by satisfying people, providing them an amazing service. And then, um, you know, letting them talk about it. It's so, awesome. you know, my, my job is to basically, you know, be the Mr. Miyagi to help some kid who needs help. You know, even if I had all the money in the world, I would still be working at a VA or a YMCA or somewhere just help just because I really enjoy it, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I believe in good karma. So I, I just focus on that. And like I said, I work with a lot of veterans. I work with a lot of causes that most it'll never make it to social media because i think it's douchey to for it even to be known that that you do it so yeah man so so if people want to get in touch with you uh i know you don't have a website i know you're you're on facebook right um, yeah i am on facebook i have an instagram account but it's mostly just me eating ice cream you know well, where can we see that <laughs> i like ice cream <laughs> my my Instagram account is uh, at Inner Wills, I N N E R W I L L S, at gmail.com. Awesome. You know, they could, they could DM me there. You, they can, my email address for like work stuff is just the, I call it the Chung Fu Crew. So it's C H U N G F U Crew, C R E W, at gmail.com. So that's where I get all my inquiries for training and so forth. And, People who want to, you know, I, I basically train trainers around the world. So, and we get together in September, we're getting together for an intensive. So it's a one, four days of actual instruction, but most people usually come for a week because they come from like Moldova and the Ukraine and Barcelona. So they're not coming for four days. They're going to spend a whole week. So all I do is I, I take them on the beach. I show them how to assess it. going to be in Jersey? Yeah, I host it here. You're more than welcome to come too, brother. That's awesome, man. Four days of fun and pork roll, egg and cheese and nice. 
Nice. So, so people are coming in, it's an intensive on, uh, and you just go through different types of techniques as uh, pertaining to the stuff we we're talking about today, or is there, there specific structure as, uh, as far as the curriculum we're going to go through? It's mostly for trainers. Like it's a couple of days I'll go over martial arts stuff because people are interested in that. And then I'll go over. And so I'll let people know. So people who aren't interested in the martial arts stuff, but just want to come for the training stuff, they won't come the prior two days. They'll come the latter four days, for example, you know, That's so cool. people can be aware of, you know, I've, I've had a few people. It's all, it's by invitation only, by the way. So mm -hmm. I don't, I don't solicit or any of that, but um, I've had some people who got permission to come for a weekend or for two days, you know, which is more than acceptable. They all came, you know, this one guy was uh, training the uh, the Prince of Morocco, so he wanted to come in for a couple couple days. So I got him in for a couple days, and you know, I just again we we went and had dim sum in Chinatown in New York City. Like you know, we'll we'll shut down a whole restaurant and just like, and that's my running theme. Whenever I hang out with people, we lose track of time and we end up almost closing down the restaurant. And that's that's, and I always tip appropriately because we're taking up a table. I understand that we're taking up people's business. But I'm very, I'm big on the food, bonding, laughing, learning. You know, one of my MMA fighters, I was just telling him, you know, I actually have to go to Chicago because he announced his wedding date and I'm going out with my family vacation. So he changed his wedding date so I could attend his wedding, which I'm genuinely honored. But it shows the level of loyalty and respect. And a lot of my guys can say that, that I was with them when they didn't have any money or this. And now they're, you know because I introduced them to this person and they got a job and then now they're in a completely different place in their life. And it's great to see these guys 15 years later, you know, and, and, and to sit there and to, to be proud of the, the men and women that they've become, you know, I've trained everyone for every major uh, armed service in our military and even every Institute from the Citadel to West Point to, you know, like to every faction I've worked with somebody, if not more than one in various factions and I feel very honored to do my part, you know, and I really believe in that. And, and I do a lot to support trainers where I sponsor people to get educated and to, uh, to travel and to train and I connect people. So, Hey, you need an internship. You need an in into this person or this type of training. I will hook you up. So my thing is to bring peace through and I'm plagiarizing my grandfather's mission is just peace through human relations, you know, in Italy or Korea, a punch is a punch, a hug is a hug. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, sometimes, sometimes. Italy, it's a little bit questionable sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, give you a little smack. Guma. <laughs> but, uh, Will, I want to thank you for coming on today, man. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. And uh, we're definitely going to have to grab some dinner sometime, either on the East Coast or the West Coast. Both, baby. Too. Absolutely. Or both. Or both. I'd rather be eating out there, though, because the food's better on the East Coast. Don't tell anybody out here. But uh, <laughs> Finally, someone who admits it, right? Well, anytime you come visit your mom, your family, you're more than welcome here. Anytime. Absolutely, man. Um, and, and to everybody out there, uh, you know, we had a lot of awesome lessons today and, uh, we're going to be putting those up in the show notes for this episode. And you know what, I, I think the biggest lesson of them all is to come into whatever you're doing, whether that's training, whether that's, that's cooking, whether that's being a Marine, a sailor, an airman or a soldier, whether that's being a teacher or a police officer, but come into it with the best intentions and, and with the, the, the desire to help people, the desire to make this world better and the desire to spread knowledge to people who are asking for it. So with that guys, I want to thank you for listening and I want you to get out there and I want you to live your best lives while you can.